Hey there, John here from Ducast. In this episode, we're going to cover improving RoundCube's sending capabilities by giving RoundCube an SMTP host. Now, this will allow RoundCube to send through a third-party SMTP host that um, provides high reliability in terms of delivery rates. So you'll have things like SendGrid.com and even Mailgun.com that you could use. Now, these are awesome services that I actually use and that um, the people that I work with use on a frequent basis. Um, so I do highly recommend Mailgun or SendGrid. These are both great services. And uh, what I'll do in this episode is I'll just show you how to get those two um, set up with your RoundCube configuration. Now, with this video, I assume that you have RoundCube installed. Now, some previous videos, we got RoundCube installed via Vista CP or the Vista Control Panel, and that's at vistacp.com. Now, you can go ahead and use Vista CP or you can uh, install RoundCube uh, a different way, but this guide will help you either way. So, let's go ahead and dig in. So, for Vista CP, the first thing you want to do is make sure that you go to the documentation and that you get the mail server properly set up. All right, so you want to get this set up right here. Just go ahead and follow through the steps here and uh, get that going. The configuration that you're going to be going to is actually listed within Vista CP. Alternatively, if you have RoundCube installed via a uh, installation that you went ahead and did on your own, you should be able to locate the RoundCube configuration file. It's going to be in the RoundCube under main inc.php. Now what we can do is we can go to Google here and search for the RoundCube get repository and that will allow me to go ahead and show you where this would be if you installed it on your own. So if you went into RoundCube and you installed RoundCube on your own and you go to config right here, so the config directory, you should see config inc php sample, right? And then you have the default inc uh, PHP. Well, this is where you would put some of the configuration options. So you would go to defaults and then you could scroll down here and you would look for SMTP host. So we have the logging and debugging. We have IMAP and below that we should have SMTP server host. And this is where you would put the information that you would receive from either SendGrid or a mail gun on the authorization or credentials that you would add into this section. So let's go ahead and do it with our Vista CP um, installation here. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up my uh, terminal application or iTerm is what I use. And you'll see that I'm already logged into my virtual private server or uh, my uh, DigitalOcean droplet here. And what you want to do is you want to go ahead and go to the configuration directory that uh, Vista CP provided for us or into the configuration directory in which you installed RoundCube. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, if you're using Vista CP, you can get that configuration information from the table that they provide for you. So this is for uh, Debian and Ubuntu. And we want RoundCube and we want to get to this main um, in includes file here. So we're going to go to the Etsy RoundCube folder. And I'll just go ahead and I'll change directories into that. All right, now if I go ahead and list out all the files here, I'll see that I should have access to the main um, includes file here. And what I'll do is I'll use Vim to go ahead and uh, go into that. But let me go ahead and add sudo to that just so I have um, a write privileges. And let's enter in my password here. Okay, so this opens up the main configuration file for RoundCube. Uh, if I go ahead and I scroll down, I should see the SMT portion and this is where you would go ahead and you would put the SMTP server host for sending emails, right? Uh, if you leave this blank, it will use the PHP mail function. Now, uh, in my experience, using and, and relying on the PHP mail function um, is something that I'm not comfortable with because sometimes especially if your server gets blacklisted uh, the PHP mail function the uh, recipient will have a less um, likely chance of receiving the emails that you send out and um, if they're important then they they may miss them so I like to go ahead and use a SMTP server host something like SendGrid and what we'll, we'll go ahead and use is SendGrid in this example but just know that there are other ones out there like Mailgun that you could use but uh, let's go ahead and let's jump back into the browser and take a look at what SendGrid has to offer. Alright, so if we go to SendGrid here and we take a look at the documentation 
um, or the support area. I'll go ahead and I'll click on support. You should be able to search for the SMTP information here. So let's go ahead and enter that in and press enter. And this will go ahead and give you the SMTP information. So go to integrate with SMTP. And you want to change your SMTP authentication username to the uh, SendGrid credentials that you have. So your SendGrid login here. Then you want to set the server host to smtp.sendgrid.net. And remember to catch the .net. So it's not .com, it's a .net. Then you can use either port 25 or 587. And in this example, we're just going to use plain text connections. And uh, alternatively, if you want to use SSL connections, you could use uh, 465 uh, right here. So we recommend 587 to avoid any rate limiting on your server host that may apply. So we'll go ahead and we'll use port 587 and then we'll use plain text connections. So if we jump back into our terminal application here, we can go ahead and put smtp.sendgrid.net as the SMTP server. Then we'll make our way to the port and we'll use 587 as the port. Then for the username and login, you want to go ahead and you want to enter in your username and login, but this is where you would put your SendGrid username and then your password for SendGrid as well. So SendGrid password. I'm not going to go ahead and enter mine in, but just know that this is where you would put your username and your password. Then right here, I would put plain as the authentication type. So it's going to use your SendGrid username and password to send the emails via SMTP. Now you can optionally put in some authentication identifier and um, an authentication password, uh, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave that as blank. So that's pretty much it. Once you have this information set, make sure all the information matches what is provided to you via your SMTP server host. Uh, make sure that's all accurate. And then go ahead and save this and send yourself an email. And then let me know how that goes. That's pretty much it. If you have any comments about today's video, do leave them in the comments area. I look forward to hearing from you. And if you have any feedback or requests on the videos and topics that you would like me to cover, go ahead and leave that in the feedback section of your account. And I uh, hope you guys have a great rest of the day. Thanks for watching.